This video clip describes the conduct of an EVH challenge, eucapnic voluntary hyperpnea, which is a substitute for exercise. EVH was originally developed and validated by the U.S. Army as a surrogate test for exercise-induced bronchoconstriction. Although the EVH challenge is less commonly used than an exercise challenge in the U.S., EVH is strongly recommended by members of the Medical Commission of the International Olympic Committee for testing of elite athletes to determine if they have bronchial hyperresponsiveness. EVH is included in the World Anti-Doping Agency Assessment of Asthma at the website listed on the screen. EVH uses hyperventilation as a trigger for EIB and correlates well with EIB in trained athletes. EVH requires some, but not an excessive amount of special equipment. Most notably, EVH requires a gas tank that contains a mixture of medical grade air containing 4.9 to 5% carbon dioxide and 21% oxygen, with the remainder of the gas being nitrogen. This mixture is necessary to keep CO2 levels in a constant range over a wide range of voluntary hyperventilation. Briefly, the regulator on the gas tank is connected to plastic tubing that is in turn connected to a rotometer and then to a balloon reservoir. Tubing from the balloon reservoir is connected to a low resistance, low dead space breathing device. The tank, tubing, and required devices can be set up rather easily. As with all bronchial provocation challenges, the EVH test begins with a patient providing a consent. Then the patient is evaluated to assure that he or she is capable of performing the test and that the test is safe to perform. Drug washouts are examined to determine if the test is valid to perform as well. The EVH test should be performed with caution in patients with FEV1 that is below 80% of predicted at baseline and should never be performed on patients in whom this FEV1 is less than 70% of predicted because of the danger of severe bronchoconstriction from the challenge itself. Once the pre-challenge spirometry is completed and the data reviewed, then the challenge may begin. The patient inhales the gas mixture maximally with a target ventilation rate of between 22 and 30 times the baseline FEV1 in liters per minute. Air is usually maintained at between 20 and 22 degrees centigrade. Pulse oximetry is simultaneously performed with the challenge. At 30 times the baseline FEV1, the patient will be breathing at about 85% of maximum voluntary ventilation or MVV. The maximum inhalation continues for a total of about six minutes. The following may be adjusted in performing this test. The temperature of the inspired air, the ventilation rate at which air is inspired, and finally, the duration of inhalation. In this example, the patient is performing the test submaximally. In contrast, competitive athletes, especially highly trained competitive athletes, may be pushed to the limit in performing the test. Now, following the six minutes of breathing, the subject performs post-challenge spirometry at 1, 3, 5, and 10 minutes, which is examined to determine if there is a fall in FEV1. The patient can then be treated with rescue albuterol until the FEV1 returns to at or above 90% of the baseline FEV1. It should be reiterated that EVH should never be performed on a patient who has an FEV1 below 70% of predicted and only with caution in a patient with an FEV1 below 80% of predicted because of the risk of a serious fall in FEV1. Although EVH is not difficult to set up, relatively few pulmonary laboratories in the U.S. have obtained the equipment necessary to perform the EVH challenge. Perhaps this has resulted from the need for this type of challenge to be performed by trained specialists and from concern over the safety of the EVH challenge itself. Nevertheless, when properly performed by trained specialists, the EVH challenge can provide valuable information about individuals who are suspected of having EIB, but for whom the objective data are lacking that would demonstrate obstructed airways.